Welcome back to Not a Strong Start, a movie podcast by filmmakers who talk movies, television, and start Halloween season in March. I'm your host, Dan Lives. I'm not your host. Number one lesson, learn to swim. I'm also not your host, Sex, Drugs, and Jason. <laughs> yes, I've done the first two with Kevin, not the last one yet. <laughs> <laughs> we need to find the Jason. Yeah, we need to find the Jason. Every group of friends should have a Jason, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't feel like the name Jason is used anymore with people. Like, do you meet a lot of kids named Jason? I do. Well, actually, one of my best friends yeah. back home uh, when I was in a band, uh, the bass player, his name was Jason, but we just called him Jay, but I call but, him Jason. How about kids, though? Like, Are there any kids that you meet that are named Jason? Uh, uh, probably, but they probably drowned <laughs> because <laughs> they didn't because they didn't listen to lesson number one. So in this episode, we're going to be touching on the Friday the Thirteenth movie series. We're all big fans of it. Uh, before we get into like our questions of this, I want to ask you guys like why is Friday the Thirteenth such a special series to you guys, and how do you guys rank it amongst like the slasher film franchises? Let's start off there. So Kevin, let's start off with you. I guess. Uh, yeah, it was uh, important to me because that was the first you know, franchise I got into as a kid, my uh, childhood best friend who lived next door to me, I used to do a bunch of sleepovers over there and he used to get me into horror and we watched all of the Friday the 13th movies. Like that was my first introduction to horror basically. And I would say when it comes to like ranking amongst like the serial killers and stuff in, in the movies, I would say that like Friday the 13th is my favorite franchise. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street is like my favorite horror character and uh, Halloween is just my favorite movie, my favorite horror movie. So when it goes into that, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's it's hard to choose a ranking over your favorite second and third. I just have them in different genres. Yeah, it does. But, but I do always associate you with Friday the 13th. Like that's I always see like Friday the 13th is like Kevin's franchise. You know what I mean? Like horror franchise. Yeah, I, I think it's just because like he's such like a, it's like a cautionary tale. You, you, He's like the Frankenstein. He, he didn't want to be a killer. You know, he was like a special needs kid that that drowned because the counselors are a bunch of assholes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, so it's almost like. It's like a revenge story in a good revenge, not like Freddy revenge. Freddy was just a creep the whole time and he does have revenge. But I, I don't know. There's something I don't know. There's something atmospheric about Friday the 13th that I mm-hmm. that I just love about it. The camp, the 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 era of the those movies in the 80s and everything like that. It was like a it was like a, an event when these movies were released, you know, it, almost kind of like um what what's that what's that big movie that everybody goes to replays for and they it's like an event, you know what I mean? The uh, oh, uh, Rocky Horror. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's like when these movies were released, everybody was flocking to the theaters because it was like it was it was an event. Everybody was screaming, they were getting into it. It was a lot of fun. That's like why I love these. Hmm? Yeah. And, and it is a story of revenge, and it's not a story of like personal revenge because, you know. He drowned, he was down and everything. That didn't make him come back. He was like, all right, cool, whatever happened, mistakes happened. But then they took out his mom. And mm-hmm. he was like, okay, that I can't let it slide. Then began his revenge story. It was like a double uh, cheeseburger of revenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, this movie is actually, uh, you know, I loved horror movies as a kid. And I actually saw Friday the 13th uh, before I saw my current favorite uh, franchise was the Nightmare on Elm Street. I actually saw Friday 13 first, and yeah. I liked it, and that was my first introduction to like slasher, like watch and stuff, and I was like, oh, great. Uh, so that's, that's why this one always held a, a special spot for me over um, Halloween, which is the other big like slasher one for the time. The Nightmare on Elm Street came along, and, and I just loved that character so much it took over, but I always still have to go back to Friday the 13th. It's just, it's such a just simple story that you could just like sit back, enjoy, and it, it's it it's all about the fun, enjoying the the characters are gonna be silly, characters that you can laugh at, characters you don't really care about for the most part, cannon fodder. So you could just sit back and watch Jason go to work or his mom go to work, uh, you know, at different times, and I, I found that it was always simple enjoyment. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. So Friday the 13th, I have like a special soft spot for, you know, it's um, whereas you had movies like an like 
you know, a nightmare on Elm Street. You even had Halloween. In some regard, they kind of took themselves very seriously where they were creating this kind of lore and the backstory behind the character and they're trying to make it pretty deep. Friday the thirteenth just isn't. They're like they don't care. They're not what it is. They've taken gambles with things. It's just we're just gonna show a dude just going around just killing a bunch of people. And it this is that franchise that you cheer. And when you're with a group of friends, you cheer and you guys are just watching like the funniest, craziest deaths. And it makes it fun. It's like a comedy the way that they approach this thing. And that's what I appreciate about it, is like they don't try to be something that they're not. They're not constantly trying to reset the timeline or the storyline of this, like what Halloween was doing, where there's different timelines. Like at the end of the day, it's a serial killer. Like, do we really need that many different timelines? No. You know, with Michael Myers, with Jason, they just kept adding new sequels. Like they never try to reset the timeline. Like none of that matters. You're just here to watch them kill people. Like that's yeah, all that because, matters. Like, and like the Halloween movies, you want you want the the characters to survive. But in Friday yes. the thirteenth, you want you them to die. And yeah. I like it that they have it take place at a camp. So it's not like an everyday street. It's this mm -hmm. atmosphere that is away from adults. And it's kids on their own, and it just has a spooky atmosphere in itself. It's just like like a like a haunted house when you go to a haunted house and things pop out all the time. You just like I don't know. It's just it just has I th I feel like it has the best atmosphere for a yeah. um, horror movie, and that doesn't typically take place during the fall. It's technically a summertime movie. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. it's it, always it, it's always funny. Like uh. Like you were saying, it's like I could just imagine like the writers coming in, and, like pitching. They'd be like, "All right, we're gonna have this happen." They're like, "Oh, do we add some context of what led to that?" Like beforehand, nah, don't worry about it. Just, <laughs> just we got there. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> I feel like they they built movies around kills that they would come up with. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And the great thing about this, like the characters that we see in these movies, you know, the protagonists, they're not really good people. <laughs> So it's like they just give us a bunch of like, you know, they're like always like the drunk, horny kids, the teenagers. They're out there kind of doing bad stuff. But then, you know, our, you know, naturally we want to kind of see them survive. Not on Friday the 13th. That's the one where I'm like, just kill them all. Like, I don't care. I, just, I want him to kill them all. I yeah, want to see the funny he's hunting the, the, the bad kids. You yeah. Know what I mean? The kids yeah. that are doing sex, drugs and rock and roll where Halloween, there was just babysitters. And Nightmare yeah. on Elm Street was just any kid who fell asleep. <laughs> you mm. know what I mean? This was yeah. specifically like a cautionary tale. Don't go in there and cause trouble or else Jason's going to come get you. Exactly. So getting into the series. Jason the Enforcer. Jason the Enforcer. What's your favorite <laughs> entry? What's your favorite entry of these movies? So so not the not the best, but our favorite, like the one we enjoy the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing, too. Like, I, I guess w with what you said, Jose, when you said what's our favorite, not necessarily the best. Would you guys say that there's a consensus best of the franchise? Like, I think I think there is a I consensus. Best. Yeah, I, I feel like it's subjective because I've heard a very different response from a lot of different fans. I feel like we all. I think we all align with the same of our favorite of the series, but I don't think it's so obviously the best one. Whereas with like Halloween with the night, you know, a nightmare on Elm street, I feel like those ones are kind of more obvious about, you know, which ones are like the better end. I feel like with this one is with this franchise, it's more obvious which ones are on the lower end. But I feel like when you start going with the top half of the list, like it's all it's all over the place. It's really just what you like. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that fair? Do you guys think? Yeah, I think so. It's like with, with this one, if, answer like what's my favorite it's not the one that i consider the best mm -hmm. but it's the one that i visit most because i have the most fun with and that's okay. jason x uh and yeah. i just have so much fun. i know it's bad it gets in rank in the upper echelon of friday 13 movies but it's just so re so ridiculous that it's entertaining and it has some of the some of the coolest depths in the series mm -hmm. uh which is why we watch the series yeah. So, like, if I had to pick one, Jason X would be my favorite. Mm. So you go straight cheese completely. Oh yeah, with, <laughs> I love I have it. To. Well, Jose's yeah. a sci-fi guy too, and that's like yeah, the that's part true. of the series when they're like, "Look, put him in the space." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's always, you know, they always say like, setting your character to space is always like the the you know the jump in the shark moment or whatever it is. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me at all that this is Jose's favorite because the Friday the 13th is such a ridiculous franchise. Yes. It's so stupid. It's so over the top. The deaths are really dumb, some of them. But, like, we love it. We mm -hmm. cheer. We actively cheer. We have all watched Friday the 13th together. 
some of these movies together and like we cheer when we're watching it we're like laughing like it's a comedy um yeah, how about it's like you when, when, when you're hanging out with your friends and they say something stupid and you, you you don't hang out with them because they say something profound it's just like you just said <laughs> no. something stupid and it made me laugh i like it yeah. i like hanging out with this idiot <laughs> yeah exactly all right kevin what's your favorite entry of them uh well i would say and i i do kind of go with i do feel like this is the best one, but it's also my favorite one to watch is uh, Jason part six, Jason lives. I just, that was the first zombie Jason. That was the one where it was almost just like th they go back to the camp, which w w I love. I love the atmosphere of the camp. I love the lore of um, Jason first zombie Jason. Um, I actually liked the characters and the deaths in that one as well. Mm -hmm. But then like almost like runner up with uh, Jason part three and 3d because it kind of brings me back to those nostalgia days when they were putting everything in 3D. You had to watch, get the 3D glasses. It was another event to go out to the theaters for. It was the first one when Jason got his mask. And it was more nostalgic of that era where it wasn't like the best filmmaking. It was, you could see that it was really like old film. But it was just, I don't know. I just, I, I love those two the most. Part 3 and 3D and uh, Jason Lives is probably my favorite one to watch. Yeah, I go with Jason. I mean, I go with Part 6 as well, Jason Lives. Um, it's fun. I like the idea that they brought back the Tommy Jarvis character and the fact that when he was trying to take him out, he ends up turning him into zombie. Yeah, you know, like it goes against it. But the great thing about it is that the is that the Friday the Thirteenth franchise, the way that they were so different was that they didn't have their protagonist. They didn't have like their final girl. They kept kind of bringing back Tommy was the closest one that they had in this franchise where they did that. So it kind of in my in the in my regard is in order to kind of really alter and give us zombie Jason they brought back that character to make that pivot of the franchise. So even when I say, you know, they didn't really, there's not really like a deep lore to it. This movie was the one that actually kind of altered his character and actually mm -hmm. gave us some semblance of a, like a overall arcing story for this character. So not only that, like yeah. every serial killer in a movie eventually gets immortalized where you can't kill them. Yeah, you know, and this is the to. one where he like graduated into it's like getting tenure mm -hmm. as like a professor. Yeah. It's just yes. like now nobody can ever kill me because I'm now officially a zombie, even though technically he was a zombie like from the beginning because he died as a kid. Yeah. And, and that was something that we all threw out. We didn't care about the logic at that point. It's like, all right, he's just a grown up person now killing people. It's great. But yeah, yeah, that, that one is my favorite. And I think it's different because that's also not my favorite Jason actor. My favorite mm -hmm. Jason actor is Kane Hodder, but my favorite yeah. movie is is part six. Yeah, I agree. Okay, uh, what's your favorite aspect of the Jason character? So, Jose, I'll start off with you. Like, what's some of the things about him that just gets you interested? Like, why why do you love this character? There's like there's two major things that I really like. One is he's just he's relentless, you know. And and that's that's one of the character attributes of him that that, that I enjoy and that carries him throughout the entire uh, series. I mean, he literally followed someone off a boat through the ocean, through New York City, just to be like, "You're not getting away from me," mm -hmm. like at all. So that relentlessness and and those usually tend to be like my favorite type of villains. That's what makes uh, Terminator Two. Uh, you know, with T1000, one of my favorite values is the relentlessness. Like, you can't escape. It doesn't matter how far you go, take a plane, take a bow, go over, it's still coming after you. So I felt on the horror aspects, that makes, uh, you know, made him really good. And that was my favorite aspect. The other one is, he's also a troll. Mm -hmm. Like, he does things to he doesn't just like eliminate people he does things to kind of like mess with them like little things like oh this person wanted to sleep with this one let me take off their head and put it in the bed for them so when they find it they're like oh there's the head he could have yeah. put it anywhere he puts it in the bed of the person they were going to sleep with so little things like that you see in the series where it's like all right Jason's just trolling oh you're a boxer you know what go ahead be your best shot and just let some box them for like three minutes straight before knocking his head off. It's also little things where it kind of adds a personality to Jason where he's just not just like a killing machine where it's almost like he's having fun with it. And like, you don't get that with like Michael Myers. It's more uh, serious. I got a mission. 
I got to get through with my message. Jason's more like, all right, I'm going to toy around with this person for a little bit before I eliminate them. And I, and I, I think that adds to the fun aspect. Kevin? Uh, yeah, for, for me, I, I mean, other than the killing, which is, which is great. I, I, I love his backstory because I love urban legends. I love going like, you know, every town has one, Ooh, this haunted tunnel over here or this haunted house over here. This camp has this old story of a kid who drowned and it automatically becomes a cautionary tale. And I, I love those old urban legends. His, sim his story is so simple. It's not complicated. You're just, you're just in that camp doing the things that ended up getting him killed. I don't know. It's just that is that his whole backstory is what I like the most. Um, that's what it is for me. It actually stems from an urban legend of him dying as a kid, the ultimate ghost story that comes back to kill you. That's what I, that's what I love about it, about yeah. the character. Yeah, I agree with that. And for me, one of the favorite aspects that I love about him is that it just seems like this is just like a hobby to him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like what you guys, like what Jose was saying about Michael Myers, right? It always stems around Lori yeah. or, you know, a, a Nightmare on Elm Street. Like he targets like specific kids. Jason doesn't care. It just seems like he's just bored. <laughs> this is what he does. He's bored. Let's just go chop some people up. Like there's no reason for him to target these specific people that we see in the movie. He just targets because they're just within his vicinity and he just wants to go mess stuff up. Like he doesn't care. And I don't want to, him to care. I don't need a reason. You don't need to tell us stuff. It doesn't need to be that deep. And that's the great thing about this horror movies, because usually, you know, and, and I love high concept uh, horror movies like I'm not downing them at all. But the great thing about Friday the 13th is because it's such a throwback to early mm -hmm. horror movies where you had people that killed just to kill. Like, there's no reason there's no you don't need to find a reason why he would like they could have played that aspect of him being traumatized, of him being drowned, right, and being bullied. They touched a little bit on the franchise and they just got away with it. We're like, that wasn't even the point anymore. They only mm -hmm. used it now just to say why he was afraid of water and drowning. And like, that was his kryptonite. Other than that, he didn't care. He just killed anybody and everybody that came in his way. He was, yeah, he was, he was the first victim. But also to touch up on that, he doesn't need to slash you. He doesn't need a weapon mm -mm. to kill you. He like he has so much like He's rage. Resourceful. Like he'll just squish your head like wherever. Oh God, he could be in yeah. a room with no weapons and he'll find a way to kill you, whether it's ripping through your yeah. body, doing all mm -hmm. that. That's that's one of the other things I love about his character. He doesn't yeah. discriminate. Equal opportunity uh, <laughs> yeah. killing. Yeah. yeah, everyone gets it. Even the wheelchair <laughs> guy gets it. Yeah, yeah. He's a MacGyver of of these serial killers. Like he'll find any way to kill somebody, and he does it in such a clever way. Like he's not dumb. Like the way he kills some of these people, that was kind of clever. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, hey, the guy's not a complete idiot. He's not just like a walking brainless Frankenstein almost. Like sometimes they give him a little bit of a thought. He just doesn't communicate, mm. right? Like he doesn't yeah, talk. Doesn't need to. He doesn't dialogue do screw dialogue i'm so glad yeah. he's never had one yes. line of dialogue me too yeah he's he's, he's very jackie chan whatever is <laughs> around him is going to be used <laughs> yeah exactly all right uh let's see so how did jason learn all these skills post death did you want to explain a little bit that question jose well i mean he he he, he died as a kid who with uh, special needs who, who couldn't swim Hmm. I, I, I'm assuming he couldn't hunt. He wasn't weapon proficient. Like all of these like random skills that all of a sudden he has and when he comes back and he comes back as an adult and he can do all of these random things. Mm -hmm. So where did he learn all these skills? You know? I, Go ahead. Oh, no. I, I think that actually stems just from being a kid. You know, remember like killing insects as a kid. They're, they're, there's all experimentation. You're doing. You you you're finding new ways to do things. You know what I mean? That's that's what they do. They just find a new way to kill, and it's just like a like a learning computer in a way. But that was something. Uh, like when I saw that question, I was thinking about. I'm like, well, yeah, it is kind of like a kid. I remember you know, killing ants with a magnifying glass or just like, you know, kids are kids are fucked up and they experiment and, you know, they just learn new ways. It's like even kids just playing video games. Most of the time, they're not trying to complete the level. They're just trying to see what they can do or break in the game or you know what I mean? I, I feel like that's where he learns his skills. What about you, Dan? Where do you think he picked up all, all of these skills, weapon proficiency, electronics proficiency? <laughs> 
now all this stuff where did he pick all his yeah <clears throat> so it's like th there's it's a two part right because when you're a kid you have an active imagination i remember being a kid and like playing with my gi joes but i would use them but i use like horror elements to that like how they would get chopped off and stuff like and stuff so even in my head i can think of all these gruesome kills and things that he did but also i always saw his character as being sort of like a weapon of hell almost where he just kind of came back because even we you know even when we see jason goes to hell he always seems like the fact that he drowned and they came back it seems like somehow he's tied in with almost being like a weapon of the devil of some sort or hell or something that's the way that I always kind of saw it. And the the characters that they gave us were always characters that were doing sinful things and they end up dying by this guy. So he could have been just getting his skill set or whatever from that and just kind of became a product of that. That's the way I kind of saw it. Yeah, well, there is an actual right answer to this. And and, and Dan, you were not too far off. So mm -hmm. the answer to this actually is since he died in camp, he was automatically enrolled in hell camp uh, where he needed to get his uh, swimming, archery, trap yeah, making, right. and other badges before he can go back. And, and that's when he came back as an adult. It took him a long time yeah. to actually like gain all of those skills. So he was but a good time student. runs different in hell camp than yeah, it does yeah. in the real world. <laughs> I, I had a theory about that too, especially about like how he comes back from the dead as a kid. And you kind of see this a little bit in part two where his mom's head was on a shrine with like candles and that creepy little shed that he had. I always thought that maybe Pamela Voorhees was a little bit into the voodoo stuff and like mm -hmm. him coming back was a curse. You know, after she died, there was a curse where he comes back and yeah, he is a force from hell, but he still has memories of being a kid at the camp, but it's just like a, almost like a demonic spirit coming into mm -hmm. him and just, just, a, a, a death force mm -hmm. Ooh, that would have been a good title yeah death what, force what, a, what about if in her grief she made the terrible decision of burying him in the pet cemetery <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what happened you didn't know that jose <laughs> I, I, I also had it. another theory too that he just he never like he never actually like he did drown but he was resuscitated and she just kept him in that shed and that's how he like grew up and started killing people no like like to, to touch on the voodoo theory that you said they do kind of hint at that a little bit like if you kind of watch part one and stuff they always show there's something kind of sinister about her and even when he had like the shed and you know uh we see like he had the parts of her with the candle and everything you owe it, even with the zombie aspect where they, you know, where Tommy gets some and he you know, gets a lunch and he comes up, there was always there was always little hints and shades of like kind of like dark or black magic or something somehow always revolved around this franchise. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't at all be surprised about that. And it actually makes the most logical sense rather than just, oh, well, he drowned and all of a sudden he's just an adult version now. It's like, well, clearly something happened and they just didn't really tell us. And I actually kind of appreciate the fact that they didn't get into all that because yes. like, we're not trying to get you involved in the whole witchcraft part. Just you're here to watch him die. It's like, yes, yes, I am. One it's ticket, one those, please. It's, uh, I also I, I do agree with that, too. But also I also kind of look at it as like a continuity thing. Sometimes in movies, they completely throw logic and continuity out the window and just mm -hmm. do something that's better for the story without explaining for it. Like like the like Marvel movies. We love Tony Stark as Iron Man, right? He died in Endgame. Spoiler alert. But if they just made a new Marvel movie and they just brought him back without explaining how he came back, you'd be fine with it. But like, I don't even care. I just love him so much. Don't even explain how he came back. He's just back because I love that character and it's best for the movie. Yeah, I agree. Um, do you guys know why they went with the the uh, the hockey mask? I think one of you knew why, right? There was a think, there's yeah. a couple of theories. People are trying to take credit for it. One was that somebody just happened to have, like one of the crew members just happened to have a hockey mask with him um, on set. And they just they just wanted that they wanted to show Jason like front without showing his face because they wanted that reveal of his messed up face like later in the movie. So they just put the hockey mask on him. Um, and that's basically it, it's been there ever since. But, you know, even the people who are part of the movie they kind of disagree with that. Everybody was trying to take credit for it, but that's one mm -hmm. of the things that, that I heard and the character in the movie that, that jokester character who had a bag full of uh, pranks and things like that. He, I guess he, he had a, he had a hockey mask. I think at the beginning of that movie, didn't he? Didn't his yeah. character have the mask or was yeah. It, yeah. it was, yeah, yeah. His yeah, character yeah, had him. that mask in there. Yeah. And so I think that's basically how it came and, 
you know, it was a blue uh, one. One right? of those random like happy accidents where it's just like, well, that's the character now. You know what I mean? It's only supposed to be one shot, but now that's the character. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. And the reason why I mentioned that because you know when you when you say nightmare, right? And you think Freddy, you think of the claw, right? When you think of Mike uh, Michael Myers, you think of the mask. Mm -hmm. There's when you think Scream is the mask. Like there always has to be something iconic. And with Friday the Third, if you didn't give him that hockey mask. I don't think the franchise would have lasted nearly as long. I don't think it would have been as impactful, which is why they kind of pivoted from part one to part two, because you need yeah. something iconic to gravitate towards. And without that Hosky, because even when I'm looking at the movies right behind you, it's the mask. Yeah. Like, look, look at the mask. You see the mask from there. Yep. All the way to the other side of your shoulder. Like that yeah. became the thing where you, you can just show that. And it's enough for people to know exactly what it is. Like even Jose's hat. You show me that, and I already know what it is. But if it was just like a bag head, right? Like yeah. what he had was just that didn't. Which do was taken for from me. a true story, wasn't that the um town that dreaded sundown? Wasn't there a killer in Texas that, yeah. that was wearing a burlap sack, and that's basically what they did? But also, it's you know, it, it, it's it's smart because you can have multiple actors come in and and play it and still that's show true, yeah. a full body in his face, and mm -hmm. it just it just became so iconic. Although I think it definitely would if they didn't go with the mask, I think it still would have had a longer series because we didn't get the mask until the third installment. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah, I think exactly. it just helped. It helped boost that character to more of like a, an iconic, an iconic uh, image. That's true. Because I, I don't think Friday the 13th was the franchise until part three came. Right. When mm -hmm. once part three came, that's when it started to elevate towards that nightmare on Elm Street kind of realm in Halloween. The first two weren't as beloved as mm -hmm. much until they gave them that. And it became the formula that we or came accustomed to yeah they weren't even yeah. planning a series it was just one mm -hmm. scary story where it was just there was so no supernatural aspect to it it mm -hmm. was just a mom's revenge over her son dying mm -hmm. yeah which which uh it kind of transitions to to a question that we were going to have on here which is uh the biggest pivot points in the franchise that was one of the biggest pivot points is the addition of of the mask uh, I think one of the other pivot points was the change of killer one, you know, from, from mom, to, from one to two between mom to Jason helped when I extend the series. What was there any other pivot points in the franchise uh, that help extend it such as those? Yeah. The, the supernatural aspect, turning him into a zombie. Mm. I felt like that was the one because, you know, no matter what you do, he can always like, no matter how you kill him, he can always come back in another movie. And so it kind of solidified we can always make a Friday the 13th movie without restarting, rebooting. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that that was a, a really big pivot point. It was. And then I think this movie started doing, uh, they started taking big gambles by the end of the franchise. Like, you know, let's throw in a Manhattan. You know, Jason goes to hell. You know, Jason X is stolen space. It seemed like they started getting kind of desperate and they just started making these big campy really campy uh they kind of deviated a little bit of putting them on the camp crystal lake and it became let's throw them at all these it's basically like a world tour of jason and yeah. kind of like they were just throwing them in different locations which we still don't even really mind because it's like the i love the camp crystal lake is one of my favorite locations of all the horror movies like i love that location the idea but if you would have given me 10 movies of the exact same location boring yeah <laughs> give me different the locations well, well, that, well also that, that that pivot of turning him back into a zombie you know came from because they killed him in part four the final chapter that mm -hmm. was supposed to be the very final friday the 13th yeah because they said final final chapter yeah. it would be the final and then they come back in part five but it wasn't even jason it was a copycat and you know fans so are mad right. at that and then just like hey let's pivot point let's bring him back from the dead and that's that that was for me the most iconic pivot point other than mm -hmm. the mask yeah and that's when after six it became really it was that it was they went kind of ridiculous with it. They didn't take themselves so seriously. And it just made such awesome, fun kills. And they just went all over the place, man. Like the kills went so ridiculous. But like Friday the 13th was a franchise that wasn't ever supposed to be taken so damn seriously. Mm -hmm. Just have fun with it. Have fun with and, it. And, and you had to at that point. Once you turn on Supernatural, uh, you have to raise the stakes. Just... Mm -hmm campers in, in in the summer camp they couldn't they didn't stand a chance before 
he was zombie mm-hmm. Jason. There's no way they're standing a chance now. So then you have to up the scale now. You have mm-hmm. to increase it to deal with yeah. his upgrade in, in power. And that's why I think we started getting uh, that world expanding more and more mm-hmm. is because of that reason. Now with his power level up, you have to bring the, the the scenery, the people, you have to bring other sources up to try to match up. Because if not, it's too much of a squash match and, and it's over. Yeah, yeah and I, it doesn't I, become I, about killing Jason. It just becomes about stopping him until the mm-hmm. next movie. <laughs> just, yeah. Gotta put him on pause. It, exactly. And that's one thing about A Nightmare on Elm Street had a new nightmare, right? Halloween had like uh, H2O almost. Like it seemed like with those movies, there was a later sequel where they were trying to get serious again and they were mm-hmm. trying to make like a good, really good movie. Friday the 13th doesn't have that. <laughs> they mm-hmm. they never took themselves seriously after the first one almost or at least with the first two i should say as the other ones started coming out they didn't try to come back and say oh no we're going to give you guys like a really good storyline we're going to try to almost reset a little bit and make this like a real good horror movie they never tried just that. the reboot the, the reboot did that it went it tried True, to go back yeah. to kind of what you got in the original it's just like killing exactly camp, more serious yes. tone but but even with that, you're right on that. But that's like the remake, right? Just like a you know a Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Like I don't really count that so much. It was them kind of repivoting, I guess. But it wasn't mm-hmm. part of this franchise, I guess I should say. They never took the. They never try to give us that serious movie, and like I appreciate that. I'm not saying that like it's a negative. You know, I just think it's it was awesome. They no, knew exactly I don't think what they it's were about doing so much serious. I think that the reasons why it's something like Halloween H two O does so well is because they're not trying to make it so serious what they're doing is bringing you back to what you loved about the original in the Mm -hmm. in the first place yeah and i i do feel like they have not done that yet with with uh the friday the 13th series in some aspects they have but you know i i I feel like i would definitely love to see something like that doesn't mean it has to be serious just give Mm -hmm. us a friday the 13th movie or series that gives us what we loved about it in the first place. That's mm-hmm. all That's all that you need. You don't have to be serious. You don't need to these intense characters or great writing. Just do what what gathered the fans in the first place. That's, that's what you want. You want the heart of Jason. And in, 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 in speaking of what brought us to the series in the first place and given us that, uh, we spoke that one of the main things that we all like about it is the kills. So to touch on that, what it what is one of everyone's favorite kill in the series? Uh Kevin, we'll start with you. What's oh, one kill that you love from the series? I mean, I I I definitely love the sleeping bag kill. I mean, the, the, the it's it's so great because, you know, and with one the of tree, my things, the swinging? Yeah, the, the, he, gra- okay. he grabs the the girl in the sleeping bag and he just slams her up against the tree. And something that I respect about it, one it was so impactful, but two, one of my favorite things about the series is like their their special effects makeup, the way that they kill people, the way that they they put so much energy to make you believe that their heads were squashed. This didn't require any of that. It was literally a bag, a sleeping bag that he just slammed up against the tree and it was just one of the best kills and it didn't re- really require any blood or visual like special effects it was i just thought it was a great representation of his actual rage and it was just such a cool kill yeah that's that's a good one that one's on my list what about you dan what's one kill that's memorable for you so the one in jason x yeah jason x is one of the most ridiculous over the top jason movies but i like it right there's like charm and stuff to it it's not one of my favorites but i do love watching it but it had one of the coolest deaths where he uh cryogenically freezes that woman's face and then just smashes it into mm-hmm. the, the corner of the desk. And it's not it's just, just like so how, he, how he smashes it's, it. It's oh like God, how he throws brutal. her body to the side afterwards. Like, with it's even just more trash. <laughs> yeah, like he does it with so much disrespect to her body after yeah. he sits her and freezes her face. That was one of the coolest deaths I've ever seen at the time. Like, that is so original. Like, you took him to... Sp- I feel like they built the whole movie just for that kill. Like Mm -hmm. that whole like that death is when I think Jason X, it's that kill that I say, hell yeah, I want to watch Jason X. Like you put him in space just because they had the freezing technology Mm -hmm. just so you can freeze a person's face just to smash it against the like it's he's so violent. (laughs) He's so violent. And even with the sleeping bag one, that was probably my favorite, too, because he just cracks her against the tree. And it's like, you're so mean. (laughs) 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're so mean. You're so disrespectful to these people's bodies. And not only like, that, it was this big wide shot. Where it yes. wasn't like you're going in close to see a fake head get squished. It was no. this big wide shot where you see the whole kill, like right there. <laughs> oh, in that scene in the Jason X, uh, it, the whole thing, I just, it reminded me of like a kid with a toy. Mm -hmm. Ah, yeah. like, oh, it's broken and just mm -hmm. throws it aside. Like, yeah, yeah. Bro. <laughs> uh, so those two were on my list. I have, I had a, her uh, third backup, and it's actually also a sleeping bag kill. And it's the sleeping bag hanging over that campfire in there. Oh, in the where, remake. Where that that guy, was a good in one. In the remake, where that guy has to watch it, and you see it there, and you hear the screams, but then you see part of the sleeping bag start to tear from the fire, and you kind of see her crisping up, and then slowly slides off, you know, like, like a burnt yeah. chicken. Uh, in there, and I was like, that was vicious, and it was, it, it was such, it was an extended one too, so it wasn't like yeah, a nice, he, and quick, and move on right like, away. That was like the, mm -hmm. that was like the only torture kill in the Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, series. I was like, that, that made that one really stand out because of that. It was so different than the other ones. It wasn't quick, like it was not slow, visceral, and all of that. So I think, and it, uh, and that also goes into another part of that where he he was killing her, but this goes into his planning. It was almost like bait for other campers to mm -hmm. flush them out to go help her, so he could kill all them too. It was like well, he was a hunter in that movie. Well, he, he, mm -hmm. oh, he let her boyfriend was right there. He let him watch. He didn't yeah. take him out right away. He let him watch until she was done, and then went to him. And set up a bear trap so he like on the way to go rescue her, he gets trapped too. Like it was yeah. that was that was a really yeah, kudos to you on that. I didn't even think about that one. That was a really good, that was a great kill. Do, do you have a quick honorable mention, like a really quick one you want to say or no? Oh yeah, part yeah. six, the the killing of the sheriff when they when he when he folded his body in half that was, was so cool. It was it was just so cool because they had to dig a hole and they had yeah. another guy in there with his legs hanging out and then he like he, oh yeah he pulls back on that. It was just I felt like that was that was one when they really experimented on different ways to kill people in part six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for me it was the <laughs> it's so campy that I freaking love it. When he steps on the head and the eyeball squish out. Oh yeah, no, he no, he started. That was in part three. Yeah, three D because they, they squished his yeah. head and they had the eyeball and the wire, yeah. and you can even see the wire, but you don't yes. care because they put I so much effort care. into it. You know, it was so ridiculous. And like when when you watch the first two, they took themselves way more seriously. And then when part three came out, it's like they finally got the tone right. Like, this is what we wanted to see because in part one and part two, even kind of, it felt too like psycho ish, you know, like Norman Bates and the mom. Like, it was playing too much into that. We're like, you're not psycho. Give us something different. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, I'm like, dude, this is 70 sloppy horror. Like, yes, please. Like, this is so awesome. Now, we, 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 we've talked about uh, the tone. And I know, Kevin, you mentioned earlier on, like, you know, it, it gives you. It, it like kind of it's that 80s like camping outdoors like that atmosphere. feeling that it gives you atmosphere that gives you that time we're missing to my question is can a friday the 13th movie work in a modern day setting why or why not yes uh, and we'll start with you on this one i i say yes it's just like if you can do it with no cell signal you know what i mean like there's just no towers or something around wherever they're at at camp crystal lake if you can do that then absolutely it's the exact same friday 13th we've seen if you add cell phone service and stuff to it where they can like notify people they go like on instagram live and now you start kind of you know people know your location your location's on like that i would say if you can just find a way to do it where they have no cell signal their battery dies or something something that feels kind of natural to it absolutely it can work so i say yeah I I kind of to piggy, piggyback off of you. I kind of felt the same. I'm like you can do it in a modern setting in like 2024, but you have to do a lot of writing gymnastics to deal with all the new technology and the accessibility of things. Um, you know, on, on you know, unless you move it away from like a camp again, like you they did with the later ones, uh, you know. Pretty much every kid has a cell phone. There's cell phone towers have gotten great, 
Uh, you, you even have, you know, reception in subways these days, which we didn't have, you know, back in the day. So there's a lot more things to deal with where you can do it, but a lot more writing gymnastics you have to do to get around, uh, you know, those obstacles that you no longer have that you would have had in the 80s or early 90s. What I, about you, Kevin? Uh, I'll argue against that. I don't think you need to to do writing gymnastics. It doesn't matter if you have cell phone service. You're at camp in the middle of nowhere. If you call the cops, it's going to take at least an hour for them to get to you, which is going to be a Friday the 13th movie in itself. And not only that, they 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 did they did do that in um the remake at least when they did the remake they were at a they were at a cabin that had they had phones they called the cops and you know these small towns is not like a parade of cops coming to get you it's like a cop car with like a sheriff you know what i mean so i don't think that there's anything in the original films that still aren't relevant today people still go camping they still go out into the middle of nowhere where they're not supposed to go you you don't really need riding gymnastics even if they have cell phones and they're videotaping jason you know killing people or calling for help you you're in the middle of the woods like it's going to take not only that it's going to take them forever to find you and lock down your location so if you're at, if you're at camp crystal lake and you have perfect cell phone service i still don't think that's going to stop jason from killing you at all I, I, I don't it think might it might not stop him from killing that individual but you know this whole you know multiple movies or multiple victims over a series of time that gets eliminated yeah. it'll have to do it like one night and eliminate yeah. them, but then and he doesn't you run. Probably have a swarm of yeah. federal agents, you know, coming over at some point. But that's not going to happen. It, yeah, it's, I mean, you can't. I mean, have it the did, phone. it did, but like, I, but that was what I liked about Jason was that he was a good stalker too, somewhat like Michael Myers. He was very methodical. Like he was taking mm -hmm. off campers that were in the middle, like that, that were wandering off and they're at this far end cabin. He kills them, hides their bodies. And, and then and th he doesn't come out and kill everybody up until you're in that third act where he's just running around hacking everybody. I would think the only, the only writing gymnastics you would need to do is why would characters still remain in the camp and not run, run, run away. You know what I mean? That I think that would be the only writing gymnastics. But when it comes to the technology, I think you can still do a Friday the 13th with the technology. One Th thing you'd always available. lose, one thing you would lose is the fumbling of the keys, right? Which was like a big thing. Like they're trying to hurt himself. Now we have push start. It stays in their pocket. They go in, they start the car, and they just drive off. Jason so there's can find a way like to, 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 to yeah, flat you, you the know, tires. You unplug. Yeah, like there's stuff you can do there with it. Um, I know what you mean about an hour that it takes for the cops to get there. But at the same time, it's like Jason doesn't run around killing people like it, like what Jose says, like it takes time for him to kind of pop up and he's around the corner and whatnot. Mm -hmm. he, he doesn't go on like on a mass spree, which is why that newest, you know, Jason, when they kind of reset and they try to do like the new Friday the 13th, it made sense why his character needed to be more of a hunter and fast moving and running. You kind of needed that element with a more modern setting. And uh, and, and and then because of the more modern setting you know they introduced the uh the underground caverns which explain how he was able to get around without being noticed and things mm -hmm. like that so mm -hmm. then if you do have camera sensors things like that you can still avoid them so mm -hmm. like it is possible but you have to like that one you know have to do a little writing gymnastics change things around to get around it in, in a way but mm -hmm. it's still possible it's, it's kind of a shame we didn't get a sequel to that friday the 13th no, it's Pretty not. Good, huh? It's not a yeah. shame. I didn't like that they they made him not supernatural. I feel like you just stay in the original timeline. Just stay, don't you if it's not broken. Although I do appreciate that movie on its own. I thought it was a mm -hmm. great reimagining. Mm -hmm. Um that's still that's still somewhat I mean, it wasn't a reboot. I felt like they did acknowledge all the things that happened in the past with like, but the, it was almost like an urban legend at that point. They don't really mm -hmm. know. It's just a story that, you know, people were killed in this camp a long, a long time ago, but I just don't like, I don't like that. They, they made them not zombie just for the sake of making it feel more real. I yeah. Feel like it's one I, of those things that, that that's forgiven at this point. Yeah. Zombie Jason. Yeah. <laughs> I just I, I agree with you on that. I wish we would get more, you know, sequels to like the original, you know, ones that we had. But 
I didn't mind in the sense of like, I see what they did with it. It was a little clever and I kind of wanted, I just yeah. like seeing Jason kill people. Like I want to see yeah. more of it. And if this I'm was like, a, it was kind of like a fresh idea of what they did with it. That's why I didn't mind seeing more sequels because again, we have 10, 11 versions, like movies of like the other one of him. <laughs> that like, I didn't mind trying to see something different. I just want to see more Friday the 13th. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I didn't mind that aspect either. I do like Zombie Jason, but I don't mind that they reverted him back because Zombie Jason is very OP. Mm -hmm. So, like, I feel it gives them at least more of a fighting chance, you know, if he's reverted back mm -hmm. uh, within that setting. So that aspect, I didn't mind it. But, you know, uh, speaking, we spoke a lot of the good stuff and everything, but what is to you guys the ugly duckling of the series? If there's one movie you got to pick and like this one does not belong. What is that movie? Kevin? Uh Jason goes to hell just because there's there's no Jason in it except for the beginning and they actually blow him up and then, you know, the dude eats his heart and he just travels from Jason like body to body even though even though 5 doesn't have Jason in it, they still they still had that atmospheric thing of the of the camp. It still felt like a Friday the 13th movie. But I would say uh yeah, I would say Jason go Jason goes to hell is uh my least favorite, my ugly duckling of the series. What about you, Dan? Um, for the sake of picking something else, I'll go with Jason, uh, part eight, Jason takes Manhattan. Like that one just kind of bothers me because it they just kind of moved them, they put them in Manhattan, and it just felt so gimmicky to me. Like it mm -hmm. just felt like something that was like uh almost like, oh, when Ninja Turtles came out and something like that. Like, let's kind of put this guy in something here. It's like it just it didn't make any sense. It felt so damn commercialized, and it felt like that movie wasn't made for us in a way. It kind of felt like it was just made to just such an obvious cash grab, I guess. And it's just, I don't know. The movie kind of bothers me. I almost picked that one, but that one made me laugh enough that I was like, yeah. I, I can't, I can't do it. Um, I had it to was, go. It with... was peak Kane hotter Jason too. Mm -hmm. I mean, even though they took him out of the camp, it was ridiculous. That was still like one of my favorite versions of the character uh, being portrayed as an, as an mm -hmm. actor for Kane hotter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I had to go with, uh, with a new beginning. Uh, in there, okay. just yeah, just this random guy. Like it just, I it, that pissed me off so bad. <laughs> like you know, at least the original, it wasn't Jason, but that was his mother. There was a relation. There was an ex. There was there was a reason there. And then you have Jason, and then all of a sudden he's gonna give us this rando. It's like no, no, mm. keep it in the Voorhees family. That's why that one, I, I don't always watch that one through my um, rewatches. A lot of the time, I skip right over that one just because that, that's my ugly talking. That's the one where it's just like, you, you don't belong here. You're not Jason. Get out. I throw, I throw stones at it, and I yell at it until it disappears into the woods. Although that one did have, for me, the scariest kill, is, uh, but only because it's something that I personally wouldn't want to experience is when the dude's taking the shit in the, uh, the porta yeah. potty in the house. and like all the say like, oh man, yeah. nobody wants to go out on the toilet. You don't have a, you don't have a chance, especially when you really got to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You got like, cause that dude had the stomach cramps. He was running off into there. Yeah. Those burritos and it, and he's, he's pooping. And that's when Jason kills you is when you're pooping, like at least go out having sex, but no, it's when you're pooping. Uh, <laughs> that's when, that's when he got, it. but it wasn't Jason. Yeah. You're there yeah. slowly dying, and your last <laughs> thing is I better wipe. They can't find me this way. Yeah. You're just trying to wipe with your last bit of life. Yeah, it's so embarrassing. Yeah, please let me have a clean butthole when <laughs> when they bring me into the morgue. I don't want yeah. another <laughs> type of cleanup. <laughs> All right. If we 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 mentioned how in Friday the Thirteenth, it's it's about Jason, unlike. Halloween and uh, like Nightmare on Elm Street where there's certain characters that you gravitate to and you kind of want them to live not with Jason but if you can bring any final girl back for another Jason movie which final girl would you bring and why? I went with not a girl but I went with Tommy Jarvis like it was kind of like the closest thing he had in terms of the continued consistent protagonist and it was like a way of He's the one that was always involved every time they were kind of pivoting with this franchise. And we've had such a long gap since Jason X that like we need we need something. We need to say what Jason's been doing in a certain way. And I think Tommy's the one to kind of take us there. It's like the closest thing. Otherwise, you just have female, which there was a lot of good female, you know, 
good characters and stuff, which I wouldn't mind. But like, they're not really tight. They're not the Lori. You know, they're not the Lori of the franchise. Like Tommy Jarvis is the closest thing we have to that. So I go Tommy. Well, what about you, Kevin? Uh, I thought long about this and part of me would want to bring back like my favorite girls from this series, which I'm not going to do. I would just go with what would bring more weight to the series, which would be uh, Adrian King, Alice from part one, because she killed his mom. Mm -hmm. And I would actually like to see that face off like Jason finally, even though he technically killed her in the opening of part two. But mm -hmm. we can just wash that under the rug. I don't care. Sweep mm -hmm. that under the rug. I would like to see her come back to actually, you know, face off against Jason. And like one, you want to root for her. And at the same time, it's like you want to root for him because she killed his mom. You know what I mean? So that that's that's who I would bring back uh, also for the nostalgic factor of the original, you know. Oh, that's a good one. I didn't even think about that. That creates that connection, too. I thought about Tommy Jarvis. I almost picked him, but he was brought back multiple times. So I'm like, OK, I want to go ahead. Just out of pure curiosity, I would bring back Tina Shepard from the New Blood. Mostly out of okay. curiosity to see where's powers at now. And mm -hmm. can, how much better can she contend with zombie unstoppable Jason now that she's honed in her powers. Yeah. And of course, this movie would fit in during the second half of the franchise where things got bigger and kind of a little mm. more ridiculous. So it was like, all right, let's 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 bring her back and kind of have the face off again. You know, his his round two against yeah. Tina. Because I mean, because that's somebody who can actually go up against overpowered Jason. I think that's a that's a really great choice. And I would like to see what she's done since then, how she has honed her powers and, you know, what she could do. You know, I would just like to see that fight. You know, she just looks at him and just goes like that and just throws him across the room. You know, yeah, you might get a Jason who's less trolling, yeah. less methodical and yeah. maybe more emotional in the way of carelessness where he's just full on attack. His impulsiveness of his rage would just be at the, the the largest you would ever see. So that that that's what I would like. But and that, Tina, definitely, dude. Yeah, that's what's funny about Jason is because you have seen him act emotional, despite the <laughs> fact when he gets like that, you see him kind of deviate sometimes where you've seen him get pissed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You've yeah. seen him go a little more aggressive with some of the ones that are pissing him off. So you know it's there with him, and he'll kind of get a little less logical so like there is an emotion that's there so even when we talk about where he's like this you know this de this destroyer of worlds whatever right like, like this warrior of hell you know he's he's like a terminator that that human side of him is still in there sometimes so even when you said kevin about how he had some of that memories and stuff you know with him as a kid it's still there because even the emotional aspect of him is mm -hmm. still there you still <clears throat> see him reacting sometimes so but like to, real quick to touch on Jose's pick, I was thinking about that movie just now. I'm like, that's actually a prequel to Weekend at Bernie's because you remember Bernie? That guy was yeah. he was her doctor in that. I'm like, mm. that's how Bernie originally died was from Jason. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, we, we've gone through like the whole series. So like before we end this episode, uh, we just we, let's rank the entire series. This, of course, includes also um the reboot and freddy versus jason and so ranking them all kevin as our guest you want to start it off from one to whatever uh yeah 12, yeah so i'll go what's, uh, what's your my, my my number one favorite would be jason part six jason lives um just because that's my favorite one to watch um it, it, just from the very beginning it's just nonstop fun um and then uh my number two is actually part three because I just love that's when he gets the mask. I love I, I even still have the option to watch it with 3D glasses. And I, I oh, that's how I always watch it. And then um, I'll go to part two because I know that that's still just Jason. And and this is the era of those 80s movies that I love because, you know, the the atmosphere, the, the old lighting, how everything was backlit. It was really spooky. And then uh, for number four, my fourth pick would be part one, the original. Kevin Bacon getting the arrow through the neck. Love that one. And then I'll go um, part four, the final chapter. Um, and then I'll go actually part five. 
only, you know, a new beginning only because I have a lot of nostalgia of that movie. That was one of the movies I would watch with uh, my childhood best friend, you know, during our sleepovers, especially when that, when the, when the, when the dude goes nuts with the ax and he wasn't even Jason, it was just like a random person just hacking the dude up with the ax. Um, and then I'll go, I'll go part seven, you know, with Tina, with the powers and then I'll go Freddie versus Jason. I just thought the story was really good. I really like how they brought those two characters together. Um, I thought it was a really smart move. Um, although I have questionable, um, choices about that movie I didn't like. And then I'll go part eight. Freddie takes, uh, Freddie goes to Manhattan because I just love, I mean, not Freddie, Jason, go Jason takes Manhattan. Cause that was my favorite version of the Jason character is Kane Hodder. I thought that that was peak Jason character for me. And then I'll go the remake and then I'll go, uh, Jason goes to hell is my last one. Okay. All right. Dan? Yeah. So the thing about this franchise is that there's a lot of it that's not definitive, meaning like my list kind of changes a lot, like in the middle to the end. Like it really just depends. I'm not as a, a Nightmare on Elm Street is a little more obvious to me and defined by where I pick. Like if you ask me next year, it's the same order. Uh, Kevin, you and I did a, a Friday the 13th one. Well, remember when we did like an old THM Oh, years episode. ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but but like my list was very different then and it's different yeah. like two a month ago. It's different today. Like it really mm -hmm. just depends and it's more of like well, which one have I seen lately because it, it reminds me how fun it is. So this is my latest list for now, but again, it's not really set in stone. Part six is set in stone for me. I love part six. That's my favorite. Yeah. Yes. You know, um, I I probably pick part three next. I think part three is really fun. I love three D. It's really fun to me. Uh, I probably go Freddy versus Jason. I love the storyline. It was really fun. I think it's so slept on. So many people were just bashing it unnecessarily. It's like I kind of like this one a little bit. Mm -hmm. and I thought they pulled it off pretty well. You know, the, even the timing and the beats, like when they had Fred. You know, it made sense why. It made sense. It made sense why Freddy used them. It made sense Great that script. Freddy couldn't control them. Like. It made sense to me. They had really cool deaths. They had some of the coolest deaths and stuff in it that I liked too. It was good. I probably went part seven. The telekinetic one was like pretty cool too. Like um, it was an interesting aspect that they added and it made sense because the humans needed something on their end. It was just like it felt he felt too OP. Like he no one can stop him. It felt like they finally gave him something. Then I go part two because it seemed like a nice kind of throwback like what we said like jason became the thing the star like he shined even when he was just baghead <laughs> i i loved it then i went friday the 13th a new beginning then i went the final chapter then i went jason x then i did the remake and then i did jason goes to hell then part eight because i really don't like it and then i went part one not because part one was so bad it wasn't yeah. that it was just that's not jason like i love the movie because of jason i do have one question for you yeah. why part five over part four a new beginning over the final chapter uh that's the those are the ones where i'm like if i watch it i think it's just because i've seen that one more recently and i just you know i mm. still kind of enjoyed it but and i i liked the deaths and stuff in it that's what it was like they had some really cool deaths in it uh the scenery was really cool i thought the movie was pretty interesting but if I see the other one, which I haven't seen in a while, I, I can always move them. That's why I'm like, it's really that middle of the page is <laughs> kind of really hard, man. They shift so much. Yeah. Good choices. I, li I like your list. Thanks, man. On my end, the first two, we're actually all on the same page. Uh, Jason Lives is my number one. Yeah. Uh, 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 part three is 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 my number two uh for a lot of the same reason too it's the introduction of the mask like i just felt that won't work so well um then uh after that i had to go with uh with, with part two because this is the one that gave us jason like mm -hmm. to start mm -hmm. and then i had to go with the original because that's what started it all so out of respect of starting the whole thing you Dude, know we're I, on I the same to, list so far yeah i had to put it towards the top uh, then this is where we diverge, Kevin. You I went Jason Freddy X. versus Jason. Oh, okay. I I really like it. I feel it's underrated. Even with the botched third act, there's every time I watch it, I kind of enjoy it a little bit more. There's these all these aspects that I really do like. Um, then I had to go uh, the reboot. So the reboot I had, I had to go next. I just and I just rewatched it. Before I left LA, and it's I'm good. like, I really I like this it. this Me movie. Too. Like, I mm -hmm. I feel for a reboot. It was very well done mm -hmm. overall. 
So I had to go uh, reboot. Then I went uh, the final chapter next. Okay. Then I went Jason X. Okay. Then I went uh, uh, part eight, Jason Takes My Hand. Then I went part seven, The New Blood. Mm -hmm. Then I went part five, uh, The New Beginning. And then that, the last is Jason Goes to Hell. You, you know what? I just realized I forgot to put Jason X on mine. Mine was mine. Mine would actually be ten right after Freddy vs. Jason. Jason X. It, yeah, I just realized I forgot to put that one on there. Hmm. So, so overall, I feel like the top of the list is pretty similar around. Once you get into like the middle to end, that's when you see some divergent because you get movies that are a little more out there, so they become a little more subjective of like mm -hmm. what's the fun level that you have with it. Yeah, that's really it. And that's why I say it it changes a lot because there's a lot of storyline or things that are kind of wrong with them, but they have funny kills. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, I forgot about that kill or I'll watch something. It's like, oh, that's right. So then I'll kind of have like a new different form of entertainment when I watch it. So it's really, you know, it's kind of they really change a lot. They mod they move around on my list all the time. Yeah, like Jason takes my hat and I know it's not good, but there's no. so many parts that I laugh at. <laughs> oh yeah yeah time. so it, it was is. like uh, just enjoyment aspect i'm like okay i i think new blood is a better movie than jason takes my hand but jason taking my hand entertains me more because of those mm -hmm. funny moments and that's stupid. what put boxer it above scene. it so yeah, the boxer scene him walking that's through the stupid. street with the pugs just like fuck your music like yeah. kicking things in the diner scene where a guy comes all tough and he just talks. Those little things, I would just, they just kept me laughing the entire moment. Thank you for watching another episode of Not A Strong Start. Please like, subscribe, comment, share, and use your channel, Not A Strong Start. You can listen to us anywhere you listen to your podcast. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, Not A Strong Start. I'm your host, Dan Liz. Follow me at King underscore Sangre. I am not your host. Number one lesson, learn to swim. You can find me at This Is Me Nombre on Instagram. And I'm also not your host, Sex, Drugs, and Jason, and you can find me at Twin Pines Video on Instagram.